Well, hello again, everybody. Well, today I'm going to continue my changes to this HP refurbished PC that I purchased from Newegg. Now, today is February 7th, more than three weeks after when Microsoft has dropped support for Windows 7. However, I'm going to make every effort to see if this thing will still upgrade. It came with Windows 7 Professional, as I said in my last video, and I'm going to see if I can get it to go to 10 for free. Now, in order to create the captures of the screens, unfortunately, the video adapter on this PC is not easy to connect to. It has that display port, which I did try to connect to, and it doesn't seem to like that one. And I don't want to do it through VGA. There's an adapter for that that I do have, but the quality goes down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this Gigabyte GT1030 video card. Now it comes with the ability to be in a full size slot or a shortened slot. It has different connectors on it. So I'm going to make sure that I change those appropriately to fit into this case. If you see anything in this video that you like or you find helpful, please subscribe to my channel. I printed the entire maintenance manual for this PC. It actually covers two models of the HP Compact Elite. This particular one is covered within that as well. So without any further ado, let me install this video card. Okay, let me put this video card in. But first I took a look at the manual, and according to the manual, the slot that I need to do for a full Time 16 PCIe is limited to a single slot. The one that's listed here is number 19. It's a black slot. And that's shown actually on the next page, which indicates that 19 is the only one that's a full PCI time 16. The 18 one, the one next to it, is not. So I got to put it into the black slot. Here's the actual video card. I already put the low profile connector on the slot bracket to the low profile version, which was in the box with the video card. So let me first open up the case. You've got to pull up on this here. Pull straight up, a little bit tricky. It took me a while before to get it out. And then the whole thing pops off. And then as you can see here, the slot that I'm interested in is back over here, this black slot. There's a white one and there's a black one. The black one is the only one that's completely full PCI. I first have to release the holder here, the actual slot protector holder. And you do that by pulling up on this green arrow. You see the little arrow showing pull up, pull up and back. And now I have to make sure I get it to the right one. I want to go in this black one, so it will be this slot right here. So I got to pull this one off. They're not screwed in, they're being held in by that bracket. So we pull this off, then we take the video card, I pull off the protector from the lands, and then just get it right up in there, and then into the slot, and I should be able to just push it down in place. Here we go. Let me pull this back up again now and lock it in place. So now I have a HDMI connector to this. So let me hook the monitor up and make sure it works before I proceed on. So now I've brought the monitor over and I've got the power. Let me connect the power up to it. And then I'll connect the HDMI, which is the top connector on here. There we go. Now if I turn it on, hopefully we have it. Let me turn the monitor on first. And let me hit the power on the front here. A little bit of hesitation there while the BIOS sized out the video. And here we go. We have the video screen coming up. It's a good sign, starting Windows. And we are up. I'm gonna have to change the resolution. The resolution is in like a low resolution right now. Let me get the keyboard and mouse. Connect them up. The mouse is moving on the screen. We're coming in. Let me see if I can change the resolution on this. Screen resolution. It's on 800 by 600. Let me do 1920 by 1080. That looks good. I'm going to keep it. So now I should be able to go and connect it to my video capture card without any further problems. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave that video card in there. We'll see. Would like to keep it as a spare. Let me go and connect the video capture. Well, here we go. We actually have it now connected through the video capture so I can show what's going on. The first step I'd like to do is just to be safe, I'm gonna do a full backup of the image that's on that PC to the network drive. I'm gonna boot it up from a Cronus and then do the changes from there. Okay, I've inserted the USB drive that is a Cronus, and I'm gonna try to boot it up. Let me do a shutdown, and then I'll power it back up again. Okay, let's see if it boots up, or do I have to go into the BIOS That's sure. right now? Press escape. Oh, it already booted up, okay. So I want number one, a Cronus true image. 
It's loading from the USB now, so it automatically did it, which is good. I was worried it was going to be one of those that we had problems with recognizing a bootable USB, but this one doesn't. As I said in previous videos, it's actually a version of Linux that's running here. Trip down, of course. I'm going to do a backup. I'm going to back up the disk partition. I don't want to back up the recovery. So what it's selected is good. I'm drive C and the NTFS system E. That's a small partition. So hopefully it puts that at the front. Archive location. I want to go to the network if I can. Oh, here it is. It's on the US Coopers. Okay, that's my current work group. Let me pick LSNet 4. And I want to put it under a Cronus. I got to give it a username and password to log into LSNet4. It's going to authenticate me. It connected okay. I'm just going to call it HP Refurb. Okay. It's going to create a new backup archive. Let's do a next. It's going to back up all of this stuff and then proceed. Okay, so it's going to take a while. I just checked on my other computer to see if the image is being created, and it is. Okay, so I have a backup of this now, but I'm still going to pull the hard drive out. That's the next step I'm going to do. Then I need the power. Oh, a little light came on the motherboard to show that there's power on there. Okay, what I've done is I've installed the Windows 10 installation USB and now I'm going to power this thing on and see if I can install it. Good sign, very good sign and I see the uh, USB being accessed so I think we're on the path to uh, success here and I'll be able to start the installation from this point forward. Now initially I'm going to say that I don't have a key. I'm going to install Windows 10 Professional and then we'll see if it either identifies the key in its database for Windows 7 Professional that was already installed on it or what I did is, I didn't show it on camera, but I have it in my previous video on updating to Windows 10 without a new license, which there'll be a link at the end of this video to, on how to run Bellarc Advisor to get the key, which I already did and I have it saved. So I'll then I'll type in that key if I have any problems. So here we go. Install now. I'm gonna say I don't have a key. So let me pick Windows 10 from this menu, Pro. That's what I want to install. I accept the license agreement. I'm going to do a custom install. Got two partitions out there. I'm going to delete them as I've done in the past in reverse order. So I'm going to click on the partition two first and I'm going to say delete. Say okay. Now it's unallocated space. Now I'll delete partition one. Say okay. It should combine them together. So now we have 232.9 gigabytes, more than enough. Now if this all works, I'm going to try to transfer this to a uh, SSD at some point. But for now, let me get it up and running with this. Say next. Now as I do this, I'm going to be doing some speed aheads. Okay, it looks like it's uh, almost done at this point. Just installing some updates and then it'll be finishing up. So I expect this to uh, be completing in like a couple of minutes. And then we can move on to some basic configuration and see what happens after that. There we go, it's restarting. Cross our fingers. It's actually running pretty well, I thought. Except for the fact that it's going to a real hard disk. That's not the fastest of hard disk either. Okay, Windows is coming up now. I don't see the uh, USB being accessed. Looks like it's booting off of the thing. Yeah, I hear hard drive cranking away. Let me see if I can get the mic near it. It's really cranking away. It's definitely booting off the hard disk at this point. Not the fastest boot, but again, regular hard drive that's kind of dated. And not the fastest one that you could get, obviously. I have the network connected, so it should be able to get what it needs from the network as well. Yep, I see the lights on that. But it's so much different with a, a non-SSD, isn't it? I would prefer a fresh load than to try to do an upgrade with the old data in place. That all depends on what you have on there, whether or not you feel that you can back up uh, the things that you need. Some people really love their desktops and they don't want to part with them. And backing them up is a little bit tricky with Windows, especially when you're going from one version of Windows to another. Okay, it finally got to the next step.
looks like it might be up. Okay, I let it sit here for a couple of hours while I did some other stuff. So hopefully it's um, settled down. The hard drive was really busy before, so I was not sure exactly what was going on. Let me see what happened here. Let me go and activate my icons, at least the ones that I need for doing this test. So let's do desktop icon settings. I want to do computer control panel. That's really all I need right now. Apply that. Okay. So let's see what happened with Windows. Did it activate? I right click on this PC and I do properties. What do we get? No, Windows is not activated. So it did not have it in its database and it could not activate it. However, as I said earlier, I did do the Bell Arc Advisor. So I do have the key that was stored on the disk. So let's try this now. Let me see if I can activate Windows with this key. Change product key. Now it's asking for the key. We'll type this in here. It will be blocked out online. Okay, let's see if this takes. So that product key did not take. It did not like the product key that Bell Arc Advisor read off the disk. I will restore this drive with a full copy of what I backed up. Remember I took a backup of everything a little while ago? So I will take that and restore it to this one. And then we will do a Windows upgrade and see if that makes any difference. Let me restore this. I will reboot and then I will restore that drive. I won't put that on the camera because you've seen it created. The restore is a simple process in the reverse. Okay, what I've done now is I restored the backup that I made earlier using a Cronus to the second drive that I added in and I disconnected, made sure that the first drive, the original one, is, remains disconnected. So now we went to this website, Microsoft Software Download Windows 10, and I'm going to download the tool that choose to do the upgrades. Accept. So now I'm going to pick the option to upgrade the PC now, which it was the default. I do not want to create a media this time. I'm going to have it upgrade right in the spot. So now it's downloading Windows 10. Okay, we're almost done here now. The verifying the download. Okay, it looks like we're finally getting closer here. 94%. Let me reduce this window. Maybe there's one be hiding behind it. Preparing. Something new. Okay, let me accept this agreement. Okay, finally getting close, 93%. Okay, it's saying I need to give it some attention. Okay, so what I did is I hit back on this. I don't care about the personal files and apps right now. I don't have anything really installed on this thing that is of any importance. So I'm going to change it from the keep personal files and apps to nothing. And I'm going to do next. So it's going to freshly install probably most of it. Okay, it looks like it finally got to the next step here. Checking off what it's going to do. It's going to install Windows 10 Pro. It's going to keep nothing. That's what I want to do. Install it. Okay, it looks like it's going through a full install at this point. It jumped out of the Windows graphical user interface. So I guess it has more direct access to the raw disk. No programs running that it doesn't want running. It seems like it's appropriate. This is actually the first time I'm trying to install Windows in the update mode. I usually do it completely from scratch as I did earlier in this video. 
So this is uh, something that's interesting in a couple of different ways for me. Okay, it's uh, at the next stage now. Let me go through and answer some of these basic Windows 10 installation questions. That's a yes. That's a yes. That's a skip. Doing something with the network says they have some important setup to do. Okay, we do a setup for personal use. I want to create an offline account. I want a limited experience. I don't want any of that stuff. Who's going to be using this? I'm going to put a password in this time because last time I couldn't access my network easily without that. So let me put a password in. I, want, I don't want the digital assistant. I don't want any of these options. They create bloatware for you, so I take them out. Okay, let's wait a little bit on this one. To the next step. Okay, it's ready for the next step. You know, I'll let them discover it. What the heck? That way I get network discovery in both directions, which it was turned off before and I had to turn it on. So let me uh, first do the icons I like to do. Personalization. Oh, before I did that, I better go up to the next higher resolution because it will, let me do display settings first. Let me make it a higher resolution, otherwise I won't be able to see what I need to see. <laughs> I don't want 150%, leave it at 100, but I want to change this to 1920 by 1080. But that's what I have. So it was just the thing was at 150%. Go to personalize, open this up a little bit. The stuff you don't see is all the way in the right hand side here. And I want to get, unfortunately I have to themes first. I don't know why they buried an extra level deep. And then you can do desktop icon settings. And I want to get control panel. I want to get computer. Those are the two I really need. I'll throw network in there too. I'll say apply. Let's see what we look like in terms of properties. It's activated now. Whoa, beautiful. So now we're able to activate Windows entirely. So by doing it as an upgrade, rather than completely scratching the drive and putting it in there that way, since apparently Microsoft does not have their database updated properly for the, the Windows 7 licenses, they probably erase that whole database at some point. Like I think I said in a previous video that I suspected that. So we've now activated Windows 10 automatically because I did an upgrade. So that still works perfectly well connected to Microsoft. So let me uh, restart it now. Let me close all these windows first and I'll do a restart. So that's it. We were looking good. Well, I, I can't believe it. This was a little bit surprising. I did believe it would work, but you never know. They could have made a change to something and it would have stopped working, but they didn't. I was able to upgrade this thing to Windows 10 Professional for no additional charge, just a lot of time. It was a lot slower than I thought it was going to be. This probably took because of a couple of different factors, probably because it is not a super fast computer. You know, it is a core i5, however, it's only 3.1 gigahertz, but really the disk speed and the memory are a factors, I think, that really contributed to this. Got it done, but it took me nearly three hours. So what you see on the video in terms of my attempts to get this thing up and running with Windows 10 took a lot of time. So I had to slice some of that out. Some of it I sped through, but some I did slice out, as you may notice. In any case, if you see something here that you found useful or helpful to you, once again, subscribe to my channel. My little head will pop up here in a moment. Click on it follow along and subscribe. There is no charge for subscribing to a YouTube channel and it will not bother you unless you pick that you want alerts. I don't need you to take alerts. Right now I need your help in subscribing. Thanks for watching.